Like, you'll have that brilliant flash, and you'll be like, yes! And then the next day, you're like, what the? No. What was I thinking? No way. Okay. today okay. we're going to be inspiring and we're gonna do some talking because it's taco tuesday i was gonna have a say it together but i decided not to oh you want to try it again okay because it's taco, taco tuesday, tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> all right good job so i'm megan i'm we're doing that i'm <laughs> we mike. actually rehearsed this <laughs> that's mike and um, every Tuesday, we do something called Taco Tuesday because in our regular vlogs, there's so many things that we just don't get to talking about. Because we, we don't get to talking about. Because we have nine kids and it's hard to stop and just like talk about something. It was hard enough to get this video just started. To do this. I had to threaten with no screen time tomorrow if they didn't go to bed. Yeah. In a very, very kind way. It was. It was very yeah. soft. Kind. Um, so it's Taco Tuesday, and we decided today we would talk about. How miserably and often we're we're failures, utter failures at things, big fat failure. Uh, so first of all, I think we failed in lots of areas of life, right? Yeah. But specifically about our failure in the kind of business aspect of life. Yeah. Well, it started because today I was watching a video, and I will link down below, um, listening to the guy who started Amazon. And, you know, we're like this. That's why I call him the guy, because I don't even know his name. That guy from Amazon. He's, He's obviously cool. fairly successful. Um, but he talked about how um, risk of failure and great success are like two sides of a coin. And you can't have one without the other. And I think we have failed many, many times. It actually gotten really comfortable. And that's what he said, too. He said he's gotten really comfortable with the threat of imminent failure. Right. And so we, like, we're always, we, I think we don't even think about it anymore, but I remember a year, year and a half ago, really thinking about how we were always on the verge of disaster. Mm -hmm. And that was just kind of where we operate best. Right. Know, right on that. Right line. on the edge. Yeah. Sometimes over the edge, actually. And then we have to kind of pull it back. Yeah. But when we get too comfortable, we're uncomfortable. And sure. um, so let's talk about kind of our history of failure. <laughs> when Our failed history. When it comes to businesses. So, because like, for me... Like, one of my most exciting, like, I love, love, love to talk about new big ideas. I love to hear about other people's big ideas. I like to come up with big ideas myself. And for most of our life, that's as far as it went. It was just a new big idea. And, in fact, I started a blog about our family, like, 10 years ago, maybe more. More than that. Called newbigidea.blogspot.com. still there. You can go read it. It's like when I just had a couple of young kids and... We were kind of known among our family and friends as like somebody who always had big ideas but never really did anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people started to lose faith in our ability to actually ever deliver on any of our ideas or be successful. So. Yeah, because I think the, the people who thought that didn't actually know that success looks like nine times out of ten failure. Right. So let's talk about our first big failure. What is the first big idea that we had that just like failed, just tanked? So the first one was actually I I started a window cleaning business in college, which I was. It worked pretty well. In which college. worked fine in college, and I was I was you know it was good money, um, and then I had this idea like well I'll just when I finish college because at that point I. Just look at this face, cute old ladies were letting him in. It's totally. called. He didn't have a beard then. No, I was just going door to door asking people if they need their windows cleaned, and. Um, and I had the idea that, well, I'll just finish college because I was, at that point, not sure what I was going to do with my life. And just like most college graduates. And went and decided to start, continue the window cleaning business. And like but most let's... college graduates, you think, why don't I wash windows forever? I guess. <laughs> I think most college graduates are thinking that right now. And I thought, I'll just make it a bigger business. And so we went down to Houston to start this business with no... No prospects whatsoever. So, like, uh, <laughs> what, three days in, you, like, came home? It was... Because there was one 
very important piece to the puzzle in washing windows in Houston that we didn't realize. Basically, in Houston, their windows are all these single pane windows, or not single. They're like they're like framed out by these little wooden. A divided. lot of houses. They're divided. So cleaning the windows would take forever long, like, way longer, because <laughs> you're doing these little individual panes, and it would take me forever. And I couldn't figure out how to do it faster, and I would have to charge too much. And it was Houston, it was hot and humid, and I was like, I, I don't like this. Yeah, that business idea, so. the business plan that moved us across the country. You made, we got a, we paid for a logo to be made. You had like yeah. shirts and hats and cards. It lasted like a week, right? A magnet for the car. Yes. It was awesome. It lasted a week. <laughs> it lasted a week. And I remember laying in bed in our little apartment that we just leased with not sure what we we're going to do. Being like, oh, I've completely failed. So that was our first big failure. That was a good one. Um, and then many other ideas that we had, we thought, so, so there was actual failures and there was ideas we had that we never even, never even got off the runway. Um, well, I think like, the next one was that we decided you would go back and get a master's and become a community planner. Like urban development. Urban development. We thing. got a book on it though. We got a really expensive, like $80 book. Got a good book about it. Off of Amazon. And then I actually talked to a guy who was in the development industry and he totally discouraged me from doing it, said it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And I like lost interest. But I bought an $80 book, you know. Who knows where that we, book is we now? We still have it. Do we? Yeah, it's oh. a good size. I use it on bookshelves, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I think we tried a lot of things in between. Then I was a, had a photography business. Mm-hmm. Um, we had group preschool at our house. But around that time, we decided with our f- best friend, Marissa that we would start a business where we sold like farming supplies to urban people and right for more backyard farming type things so we i got a gmail address called the urban homestead store i still think this is a brilliant idea by and the this... way uh, we still use that email <laughs> but um the urban homestead store and marissa and i started a blog thinking we'll start the blog on this topic of raising chickens and growing having gardens because it was a trending thing it was 2007 at the time maybe that was before then and um 2006 probably yeah we started this blog we had this great idea we had lots of conversations on the phone we felt really excited we thought we even did some research into opening one in boise idaho a store yeah yeah we did some research into properties that were available businesses that were similar in boise yeah god actually and uh never pulled the trigger it would have been great we did have a blog though and it's still there i think it's called backyard farming blogspot.com we had it for years we even went to like this farming conference out east and i had like a booth there and talked to like legit farmers and we we're just like what are we doing <laughs> we don't belong here <laughs> but we talked about urban farming you know and that idea but um never really got anywhere no so that didn't happen that tanked um, I had an idea with my brother once upon a time to open a store where you could build your own remote control car. That never happened. I had a Etsy shop where I made prints of scripture verses made to look uh, modern graphic prints. And that's, that kind of happened. That, you, you did some. We print, yeah, like we were getting good and... business, but I never invested to continue doing it. I, you know, We never felt like we could invest in it. Would have probably helped us a lot. <laughs> Um, I had my photography business, which did okay. It was, it was, it was extra money. Yeah. But it never really took off. Um, well also it should be said I had different, I had like three different careers in the span of, I don't know, five or six years. Yeah. That none of them really worked out. First you were, uh, well first I was a recruiter, a corporate recruiter, which is just a headhunter. And then I decided I liked the idea of being in construction. So I was a construction manager for. Lennar. Uh, Lennar Homes down in Houston for two or three years. Then that, the housing industry. That didn't work out real real well. It was, it was okay, but then I went into commercial construction, didn't like that, and then ended up in computer software sales. You know, naturally. Natural. Yeah. Didn't like that either. So, so then we were at a total loss. Um, and then we were just like racking our brains for business ideas. We had known for a decade, you know, we'd probably been married for 12 years at this time, that we wanted to work together. Yeah, right? <coughs> it's okay. That we wanted to work together. Right. And just couldn't ever figure out, like, oh, I have an online store. And work from sh- home. Drop ship stuff yeah. and work from home. Um, we tried all sorts of ideas, and none of them ever panned out. It was about that time in our life when somebody close to us said that we would never be successful. We heard through the grapevine. Somebody really close to us said, they'll never be successful. They'll never figure it out. 
we also we didn't understand how to successfully chase those ideas and build those and we were too afraid of, of failure, failure. That was a, I would think that was the biggest thing that kept us from it. And we were afraid of just crashing and burning. And so we didn't ever do it. Yeah. Um, so we did start the business with doTERRA, but then really continued to fail or have failures within that business. We made, we, we tried lots of things that didn't work. We, it was just this process of, oh, that didn't work. Try this. Oh, that didn't work. Try this. And just continuing to, but we willing to move forward even when we did fall down. So the failure is really what helped us to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, and the, so. I think the adoption with the girls taught us how to ride that line right next to disaster and to believe right. that it was still going to work out. Right. And that, that the actual power came from still believing, even when you're like dangling over a cliff. Right. When everything else points to you <clears throat> dying. That there's real power in that. And so after the adoption process was over and we had learned so many amazing principles in that year and a half, we started to apply those to our business. Mm -hmm. We started to apply them to other arenas of our life right? and learned that, um, that it wasn't the risk, the greater the risk, the greater the failure. It was the greater the risk of failure, the greater the chance of, like it was um, equally proportioned with how much success you might have. Right. And so, like, we kind of started to live, like, well, why don't we try to do this? It, right. One was, remember when, um, I think this was a real learning thing for us. We had this deck, and it was just a mess. Oh, right, right. And then, and we needed to sell our house. It was more than a deck. It was an integral part of the house, too. It was like this, like, over the garage sort of. And it was, like, some, rotting. Yeah, it was And we apart. couldn't afford to fix it with a professional. Yeah. And so you just like went out there and just like started ripping it apart. <laughs> with no idea of really what I was going to do. But I remember but just... we were like, but we're going to believe this is going to work out. Right. Yeah. And we were like, I was like, no, it's going to work out. You're going to figure out a way. We're going to pray and it's going to work out. And it did. It worked I think out. I remember like sitting out there at the deck with each other, like saying a prayer. Yeah, I like, just said. what are we going to do? Because we were so, it was such a mess and a disaster. So we started like applying that, like, hey, 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 just because we don't know doesn't mean it's not going to work. And then we moved across the country and then um, we did things there and then we moved into an RV. Again, which no that clue. whole process was like skirting with disaster, getting into that RV. Yeah. I mean, that could be a whole video in and of itself. <laughs> and then we got into the RV and just toured the country. And uh, there were so many times when we were on the verge of disaster because the RV was broken down. We were emotionally on the verge of disaster. <laughs> sometimes because we were just like, what? And I think also you were always in, totally out of your comfort zone. Right. But that's also when we felt so alive and when magic happens. Have you guys ever seen that? I totally believe in this principle that like, here's where your comfort zone and out here's where the magic happens. Right. Oh. <laughs> and so um, we didn't fail that way. We started a YouTube channel. How'd that ever end up? Just kidding. We don't know yet. We're on it right now. We're still working on that. I know. We are. We're still learning. We're still failing here on the YouTube channel, in fact. Yeah. Sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's on display is, for everyone like, to no, see. They're like, no, we know. This is one of your failures <laughs> right now. We're experiencing one at this moment. <laughs> no, but, um, and then we decided to move to Europe. And everybody would always say, like, oh, so you're moving to Europe with your nine kids. Like, so how many times have you been to Europe? And we're like, zero. Zero. Never. Never been to Europe. Yeah, before. that ba that did kind of ba baffle people. They're like, okay. So That's when they're like, they okay, assume, now I think you're crazy. We used to, they assume we'd been like world travelers, and then like, oh, now we're gonna take no, kids with us. No, we've never been to Europe. We're just gonna move there with our nine <laughs> kids and ship our van over there. Um, and people also, I out of every story of our success, there were always people that said it's not gonna work. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, before we would stop because remember you said you talked to the guy who said don't go into urban planning. So we said, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We would listen and think that they like, were oh, right. Oh, okay. You're right. We won't do it. But, you know, like, for instance, the van. Tons of people said, don't, you can't ship your van over there. You won't be able to drive it there. It won't work. You'll have to do all this licensing. And they were all wrong. Or you we, won't be able to park it anywhere. Or it's drive going to be it this major you know, problem. And now we're like, oh, my gosh. Our life is a thousand times easier because we didn't listen to those people and we shipped our van over here. Right. Um, another. Just take that, people. <laughs> you know. Um, well, what I want to say is that. Part of the problem, I think a lot of us are, are failure averse because this... Our, our, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to fail. Um, and our, we've all been brought up to believe that we shouldn't fail. Like, 
our school systems sort of teach that failure is bad. And when you fail, you get a bad grade and That's you don't go to college. And you, you know, there's like failure has this domino effect, according to, to a lot of people, which just leads to you being dead in the gutter somewhere. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're too afraid of failure to actually do anything. But what we've learned and we're still learning and we're not perfect we're at this. We're still practicing. We're still working on it. But that failure actually is is what leads to success. Those who are not willing to fail are the ones who will not have the same amount of success as those who might be willing to fail. So yeah, the how, um, now yeah. some people actually there have been times in our life where we've been so close to that failure. It's like it's like our nose is like scraping it that we've actually gotten phone calls from concerned loved ones telling oh, us sure. that we need to stop. Yeah, you need to stop. This is not this is irresponsible. Um, and, and I, you yeah, know what? If we even, had stopped then, that would have been a failure. Yeah, it was. Oh yeah, sure. What? Like the only the only real failure is if you actually stop and you give up. That's at that point where you're, it. you know, <laughs> scraping the bottom. <laughs> but if you keep going and you hold on and say no, it's gonna work, and I'm gonna keep trying and keep believing, then you'll come over the the ridge and ta da! But then you'll probably hit another one. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. It just I think it if you're not doing things that keep you kind of on that edge, then you're probably not progressing. Something that I'm afraid of now, which is our next big step, is us actually traveling more to the like Israel. Oh yeah, you were just talking to Jordan, your parents about that tonight. Just yesterday I had a little freak out because we're gonna leave the van behind and I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna move nine kids around and you know, two parents around these very foreign countries to me. <laughs> Just like that, we'll be like, we're moving like this. So I'm having to learn, once again, to just step into the dark and be willing. And to be willing to be at the airport and not really sure how you're going to get to the place you need to go. Um, That's scary to me. But I'm hoping that somewhere in there, there's some But that's also where all the, yeah, that's where all the magic happens. That's where all the possibilities open. Yeah. Now we seesaw back and forth because then there'll be times when I'm totally overwhelmed and like crying in bed. And Mike's like, hey, it's going to be fine. That's true. So it's not like you're always. Scared Luckily, we can we we can usually one of us is in a good mood while the other one is scared. Yeah. If we're both scared, that's when we're in trouble. <laughs> that's when it's so, bad. So, if the if Moral of the story. someone is listening and they say, "I want to do that, but I'm still so scared," I'm scared. <laughs> what do they do? Like you'll have that brilliant flash, and you'll be like, "Yes!" And then the next day, you're like, "What the no? What was I thinking? No way." What do you do at that point, you think? I think you recognize. I think your your brain, your body wants to protect you. Your brain does. So when it when it senses risk or senses something that it thinks is dangerous, it's going to come up with the reasons you shouldn't do that thing to keep you protected. Woo-wee-wee. But that's that's something from our, you know, long ago, you know, our instincts from when we had to run from the lion and protect ourselves. I thought you say run from the law. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Running from the law. Um, but that really, you don't need that. So you need to recognize, like, this is just my brain, you know, it's it's getting out there and trying to protect me, but I have to say, okay, I see you, I respect what you're saying, but I'm not going to listen. Yeah. And you sit over there in the corner, now I'm in charge. Yeah. You know, be Chuck Norris. I think a couple of things that help with that, though, is one, um, read good books. Mm. Fill your life with, like, audiobooks or reading books. Uh, with thoughts of the optimism, read biographies of people who took risks, you know, like my hero right now. Evil Knievel, right? Yep. No. Yeah. Oh. Starts with an E. And I have a slight, I have an, inte- Einstein? I have an intellectual crush. You know who it is. He even like cried in a video because he was oh. being pushed on so hard about what a failure he was. Is it the guy? Elon Musk. <laughs> I love Elon. Should I be worried right now? It's an intellectual. It's an intellectual thing. No, because he like has done such crazy things and like freaking Neil Armstrong came down on him and was one of those voices that said it's not going to work. And he like cried about it. Like he's my hero. But he made it work. Come on, SpaceX. Oh, (laughs) he's still working on making that work. I know. But he's my hero, man, all the way. And um, so like reading biographies or watching YouTube videos about people like that. um, I also think. Here's a tip that Mike and I have learned. When we have, right. yes, when we have one of these big ideas, these dreams, we don't tell everyone. Right. I think we've shared this before, actually. Yeah, so 
don't maybe open up those really crazy dreams to people who are really out of love and concern for you gonna be like oh no don't do it no share them with your optimistic friends and get a buddy a masterminding buddy who will be like happy, yeah happy buddy do it i totally believe in you you gotta find someone like that and then like if there's people who just aren't ready for that don't tell them but i will say that they change yeah, people who around. used to be like more afraid are like some of our best cheerleaders now right yeah they become the cheerleaders yeah and then you can or be maybe more they open even, they even join you in your craziness yeah but sometimes i still don't tell people because i don't want to if they're going to be afraid for me i don't even want to hear it because i am like that close to the edge yeah that i don't need to hear any of their fear you know mm -hmm. so 2018 is going to be our our wildest and most risky year yet right right pinky swear do it and that means it's going to be our best year yet. That's right. So we've failed a lot. But we've always failed forward. Right. We didn't even plan that. Good job. Mm -hmm. So that's our story of failure. So get we, out there and fail, We are folks. failures. Be a failure. <laughs> be a failure like all the other people who have failed and then succeeded. Yeah. So Love you guys. It. There's another Taco Tuesday down the drain. <laughs> On the drain. <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> taco Tuesday. Somebody write us a jingle. All right, let's see. Taco, 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 taco Tuesday. Talking mm. on the taco. I was thinking more like Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Were you in choir? That sounded good. <laughs> Bye. See ya. <laughs>